Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome. Welcome to visitors. And do stay and have tea and coffee with us after the service if, uh, if you've got the time. Um, I think the notices are as writ. Um, I'll emphasise choir practice on Friday if any singers can make it along for an hour. <laughs> Seven o'clock on Friday. Um, we're looking at, well, we look at the hymns for next Sunday. That gets us warmed up. And then we're looking at a couple of pieces for the carol service, which is two weeks today. Two weeks today, the carol service. Right. Um, a couple of recent pieces of news. Um, Andy's told me that Carol Rizzo is back in hospital. So we will need to continue to pray for Carol. Um, and then this morning, Ian rang to arrange to borrow the wheelchair because Anne may have broken her ankle in a fall. So we won't be seeing them today while they rush off to Heatherwood, presumably, <laughs> to see if they can get her ankle looked at. So um, more prayers for Anne. Um, and then we're going to welcome Kim to our pulpit this morning. So we haven't seen you for a little while. Nice to see you. Um, so we'll start with the Advent Liturgy. If it goes on here, it'll be fine. Thank you. <sighs> um, how does it move on? Just touch one side. And it, and it goes on. And left to go back again. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, quick candle lesson there. Yes. <laughs> so we light the second candle, remembering John the Baptist, whom God sent as a messenger to prepare the way for his son, Jesus. John's father, Zachariah, spoke out these words at his son's naming ceremony. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. And then we sing one verse of Make Way. Let us pray. God spoke to Zechariah to prepare a new beginning. Help us to be prepared to recognize new beginnings. John called people to be prepared to be repentant. Help us to be prepared in our hearts for your coming. God sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for many to meet Jesus. Help us to prepare the way for others to meet Jesus. Amen. So welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Advent. Advent has such a lot of interesting themes for us to consider. And the Methodist Church this year brought out a, a lovely resource, There is Room. And so taking one of the thoughts from that resource, what they're suggesting for the second Sunday of Advent is that we consider how there's room for difference in God's kingdom and in the church. And as we consider the the different characters who prepared for Jesus and who were around at the birth of Jesus. Um, so we, we have a video that I think Joe is switching from one bit of software to another. Are we there, Joe? Almost, okay. So there, there's a video that the church has produced for each Sunday of Advent. 
And in considering there is room for difference, we're thinking here about neurodiversity. Hi, I'm James, I'm the Youth President for this year, and welcome to my church in Clifton. And today I'm going to be taking you through what neurodiversity is, and how churches can help people like me. I am a person who lives with multiple neurodiverse conditions, um, ADHD, autistic traits, and dyscalculia. Um, over my lifetime, I've had uh, multiple problems um, in mathematics. I can add and subtract reasonably fine, um, but ask me to divide or times, and I'm of no use to anyone. Um, in social situations, I am unable to read emotions or the meanings behind stuff. Um, there have also been positives, however. Um, I've been found to be creative, a good problem solver, and fantastic at literacy skills. Before we begin, it's important um, to explain what we mean by neurodiversity. Examples of neurodiverse conditions are attention deficit hyperactive disorder, um, autism, dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, dysgraphia, and Tourette's. There are multiple things churches can do to help people like me. And these are understand that our conditions and um, affect us and both negatively and positively in our everyday life, our home life, our work life, and our church life, and accept us for who we are. And sometimes our conditions um, need a little help along the way and to be able, and to be, and be able to do some tasks. And so if you um, and could put out um, equipment without us having to ask, um, such as acetate um, overlays for dyslexia or doing shorter sermons or interactive sermons even. Um, it, would, it, um, it would do a lot to help us um, to interact um, on a daily basis. Statistics show um, that people with neurodiverse conditions are more likely um, to, be, um, to be the victim of bullying. And, for, uh, and what we need is a space for us to escape to and be able to heal and, and, and rebuild. Um, at the end of the day, our conditions um, affect us all slightly differently. Um, and, the, uh, 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 and we've spent our lifetimes um, build, uh, and building up coping mechanisms to be, uh, 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 um, to be able to live with our conditions. And so the, uh, 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 and so the best people who know how to support us is us. So don't be frightened to ask us for help. And these sorts of practices um, help us and they also help you. Helps us by creating um, an inclusive space where differences are celebrated and alterations are seen as a natural way of life. And helps you because we will be equipped um, to interact more and give a fresh insight into the life of the church. Thank you for listening today. And we hope you found this information helpful and it will definitely help and people like me. Thanks, Joe. So some, some thoughts there about how our church can be more, more inclusive and welcoming to anybody and thinking about the kind of barriers there can be, which are, are not always obvious. She just before the service, I was having a conversation with Liz about how some people are becoming excluded from the financial system and banking because banks are closing and technology is difficult and not everyone finds it easy to keep up with changes. So let's sing a hymn that it expresses our willingness to include all, but also think about how we might unconsciously be presenting barriers that some people might find difficult. So let's sing, it's Singing the Faith number 409, Let Us Build a House. Mm -hmm. 
As a musician myself, I well know the problem of not keep being able to keep track of how many verses you played and where everybody else is. So, <laughs> live music is great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But let us pray. 
Almighty God, we gather in the name of Jesus. We gather on a cold day, remembering that all things have come from you, heat and cold, sunshine and rain, wind and snow, and that each has its place and its purpose in maintaining our wonderful planet. We gather as the great family of God, diverse and beautiful. We are all sorts, and your house has room for each one. We gather to praise you for the beauty and complexity of the natural world. When we see the way animals and plants change and adapt, we see that diversity is a strength and change helps us to adapt and grow. Thank you that there is room for us and for the people we like who are just like us. And there is room for the people who challenge us that we might find difficult to get on with. May we be open to your leading and open to each other. And may this church continue to be a place of support and welcome to anyone who comes through the door. And for those who wouldn't think of coming through the door, who wouldn't think of going to any church, may we be always ready to reach out with a smile and kindness. Almighty God, we have not always been open to your leading. We've not always loved you. And we've not always loved our neighbors as ourselves. Sometimes we have spoken thoughtlessly. Sometimes we have had the highest ideals, but we have fallen short in our efforts to live up to them. But we thank you that like a loving parent, you forgive us and help us to learn from our mistakes. And so with each new day, we pray for your help anew to live as disciples of Jesus and children of God. Amen. And the collect for the second Sunday of Advent. God of all holiness, your promises stand unshaken through all generations. And you lift up all who are burdened and brought low. Renew our hope in you as we wait for the coming in glory of Jesus Christ, our judge and our savior, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Now, I wonder if anyone's got pets at home. No pets. Or have ever had a pet? Okay, I'll put my hand up there. Have you ever had animals of different kinds in the same house? Anyone ever had a dog and a cat in the same house? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Did they get on? They did. Brilliant. My daughter at the moment has a dog and two cats. They kind of get on. They don't really like each other. They tolerate each other living in the same house. She puts a little gate up when she's feeding them though because the dog will bolt down his food and then run for the cats. They kind of get on. And sometimes people can find that animals of different kinds really don't like each other or they can get on fairly well. At one point we had rats in our house and a mouse. They did not get on. 
they had they couldn't even be kept in adjacent cages and it actually wasn't the rats who would get aggressive it was the tiny little mouse if if the rats were out for their little walk around if they went anywhere near the mouse's cage he would be flying at the bars and trying to attack them and he was a tiny little thing and they were quite big but different kinds of animals can sometimes live together fairly peacefully I couldn't really find any predators in our house at the moment, but I did find, wrong one. I did find a fox. And I found a coyote. And I found a dragon. As you do, yes. And I did find some things that might naturally be prey animals. I found a couple of cute little lambs, easily prey animals. And I found a deer. And the duck, which shouldn't have come out first. I found a duck. If there was if there were small children here, I, I would they, they would have a lovely time looking after my animals. Now, in our reading, we have a, a wonderful poem from the pen of Isaiah about peace and about some of those natural en enmities. I suppose we would see it as a metaphor and a looking forward to the day when natural enemies will be at peace, will be together. So let's hear our, our first reading from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 11. Thanks, Liz. Right. The first reading is from Isaiah. You can find that on page 661 if you want to follow in the Pew Bible. So Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. The branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From its roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash round his waist. The wolf will lie with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, and the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. To, will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. Infants will play near the hole of a cobra, Young children will put their hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, and you can find that if you want to follow on page 915 in the Pew Bible. It's Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. John the Baptist prepares the way. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. 
a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt round his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from, from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with the repentance and do not think you can stay in your, say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax has la been laid to the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable, unquenchable fire. Thanks be to God for his word. Thanks, Liz. Let's sing our next hymn, which in Singing the Faith is number 162, The Prophet's Voice Comes Down the Years.
Well, Advent takes us through some very interesting themes and contrasting themes leading up to a celebration of the coming of the Christ child. And those themes encourage us to look back at the past, look at God's promises of the past and standards set for us in the past, and think about our inheritance of faith. And then also to look forward in faith and hope to what God will do that's new. We're encouraged to examine ourselves and be open to God's leading and seek for Jesus for ourselves. So we get to think about John the Baptist a bit this week and a bit next week, but on the second Sunday at Advent, mostly concentrating on his role as a prophet and next week's readings will take a different angle on John. What a strange character. I often wonder, would we like John if we met him today? Wouldn't it be very strange if there was a character living rough somewhere outside of town, eating bush tucker, basically, what he can find living off the land and saying strange things, calling people to repent? Would we, like people then, walk miles to go and see him and listen? And would we respond to that call to be baptised? I wonder. Such a different character from Jesus. And he was rather tough on the Pharisees and Sadducees, wasn't he? Starting calling people names, you brood of vipers. That's not really very nice, is it? But he sees them in the queue to be baptised and he knows they're not sincere. So are they just going along with the crowd? Have they been sent by the authorities to check him out? Well, we know the authorities did things like that. So that's, that's a possibility. Or is it that because they tend to claim they're following God already, they need to be held to a higher standard they should know more, so they should be doing better. And much of John's message and like Jesus' message after him was calling people back to the high calling set by the prophets and teachers in the Hebrew Bible to be an example to others of serving God, to be that light to the Gentiles and attract other people towards God. Of all the prophets, Isaiah features heavily in the New Testament. He's the most quoted prophet in the New Testament. And Matthew quotes him quite a lot. There are nine times in Matthew's gospel that he's quoting or echoing Isaiah. And with the new lectionary year, we start going through Matthew's gospel. So we'll come across some of those quotations where he's reminding people what God said in the past and saying, this is being fulfilled now. This is how Matthew saw Jesus and what the, the standards that God was calling people to. So right near the beginning of his gospel, he quotes Isaiah 40. And we, that's the bit we heard, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. And showing people, that's what John the Baptist fulfilled in his work, calling people to repent and look for the one to come who was on his way right at that moment. Isaiah is a, a very interesting book. It's very long. It can, it can be a bit daunting if you were to start from the beginning and, and read through all 66 chapters. And it was written probably over quite a long period of time from, it takes in the period before the exile and during and after the, the exile of the Hebrew kingdoms. And the bit we heard is from the beginning probably from the pen of someone who's become known as Isaiah of Jerusalem, 
and he was a member of the royal court and a royal advisor. And the early chapters from Isaiah, from a time when people were rather worried, there was a lot going on. There was constant squabbling between the tribes of the region, plus they were stuck between two superpowers of Egypt and Assyria, who were always threatening. And they needed a strong leader. And they'd had one. They'd had King Uzziah. And he'd reigned for 52 years and then died. Now, we've gone through a change of monarch ourselves, so perhaps we understand a bit how people would feel when many people in the kingdom would never have known any other monarch except King Uzziah. And he, he was more than just a figurehead for the state as well. He was president and prime minister and commander of the army, principal lawmaker and most senior judge all rolled into one. So that person needed to be very strong and very wise. And people liked Uzziah. They'd had a period of stability and prosperity so when he died, everyone's bound to feel a bit nervous. What's going to happen now? And his son, Jotham, he didn't do too badly. He only gets a short bit in the Bible, but he reigned for 16 years and he was a good king and built on the strong position left to him. But he was followed by Ahaz, who was a bit more wobbly. And then Hezekiah. And it's thought that some of the passages where Isaiah is talking about the strong king who will be a good king, faithful to God and a good leader, many of those apply very well to Hezekiah. But after him, Manasseh, another long reign, but not good at all. And it's under his reign that Isaiah disappears. It's thought killed by Manasseh. But other people carried on Isaiah's work of speaking to the nation. And their work also appears in the book of Isaiah. So the book with his name on ends up very long. That's why it can be feel a bit daunting to read it through. But in chapter 11, we have that lovely message of encouragement. That king you need is coming. That leader you need is coming. You will be led by somebody who is suitable for that responsibility. The description that we can also recognize as fitting Jesus. And this description of a good king is very interesting. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. So he is a man of faith. A spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. So with righteousness, he'll judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And nothing really about doing a lot of religious things. There's nothing about going to the temple and doing all the right rituals and saying the right words but the spirit of the lord is recognized in him by his character and by what he does and the kind of values and behavior that people want to see in their leaders and know will make life better for them and as we work through matthew's gospel in this lecturing year we'll find more instances where Matthew quotes Isaiah. So calling pay people to consider the values of the past, where they've come from, what makes them who they are now, and calling them back to those values and saying, this is what Jesus is like, and this is what Jesus will do. So I'm going to ask Joe if, if he'll put the a section of that Isaiah passage on the screen. So we have Isaiah's vision for the future. We're getting there. 
a bit of Isaiah's vision for the future and a vision of leadership that is Isaiah in his own lifetime may have seen fulfilled in Hezekiah. But then Matthew picks up some of those words and said, this is, this is Jesus, this is fulfilled in Jesus. Okay, could we see the next bit, please, Joe? Thank you. So there's, there's some high ideals there, aren't there? Some high standards, things that we would like to see in our, in our leaders, not, not just in one leader these days, but perhaps in a, in a whole government, local councils, leaders of all kinds of descriptions. Are we there yet? Thank you. Perhaps we could have a, a few seconds on each slide and then go backwards so we, we can take in some of those words. So we've got words like wisdom, understanding and counsel and might and knowledge of the Lord. Okay, are, are we nearly there yet? Are we anywhere? <laughs> are we anywhere along the way? towards the fulfillment of that vision. I'm going to make no comment about present government or present local councils or present leaders of any kind. <laughs> I wonder what words stand out to you. Is there any word you want to pick out as saying, yes, that's what we need. Wisdom. Understanding. Yeah. So I've, I've asked Joe, when, when people say the words that are standing out to them, if people highlight them, um, in the old days of OHP, I would have a different color pen. It's... <laughs> Young people are wondering what OHPs are. Do you know what OHPs are? Okay. A, an older person will explain that to you later. It was what happened, what happened before we had the screens. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask you what that means later. <laughs> I, do, I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that inside an OHP? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> that you come to church and you get educated. Thank you. <laughs> council. Someone saying council. Knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Knowledge, fear of the Lord. Thank you. Perhaps we could go to the, the next slide and, and look at the words there as well. Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Do we want to pick out anything from there? The things that we, we need to see in our world today? Justice. Yes, so decisions for the poor. Thank you. Anything else we want to pick out from there? Righteousness. Righteousness. Okay, we, we don't do so much slaying the wicked these days, do we? No. 
no perhaps we'll um we'll, we'll leave that bit <laughs> okay so do we do we have justice okay there's a debate there i think yeah <laughs> um. Do you want anything from there? Faithfulness. Okay, so let's make the questions a little bit more personal and I, I, I won't, won't ask you to say any of the words, but I wonder if any of the words stood out to you as something that you might be personally challenged on. Is there anything that that you need personally? So perhaps we could just go through the slides again and and if if you want to choose one word that could perhaps be be your word for the week to think about and pray about and and reflect on. More wisdom. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <coughs> mm. Well, John, preaching repentance, reminds us that we, we may not have the qualities that we want to see in ourselves, but we have the opportunity to make the commitment that that's what I want to aim for, that's what I want to pray for, that's what I will be one day if I ask God to help me. So we, we can start the journey. Or if we feel that here and there we've lost our way, we can get back on the journey. We can start again. So perhaps you have your, your word for the week or perhaps there is something else that you need to pray for, that you need to aim for, that you need to ask God's help for. So we're going to sing our next hymn, which is number 411 in Singing the Faith and expressing our faith and our hope that God is with us and will help us. Thank you.
Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you have given to us. And we pray that you will bless what we offer back to you, our gifts of money, our time and our skills. And we pray that you will bless our church as we seek to further your work in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. So our prayers of intercession, let us pray. Almighty God, we bring to you our prayers and our concerns, living as your people in a world that's so much in need of your message of peace. And so we pray for the values and the standards that we need For the world's leaders and governments, we pray for that spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. For honesty and integrity when making decisions, and for fairness in making laws and judgments that affect other people. We pray that those intent on doing evil can be restrained and that the innocent and the vulnerable can be protected. We pray these righteous qualities for ourselves. As we live as Christians in our homes, in our workplaces, at school, and in our communities. And though as we look around us, we see the world still has a long way to go. And we ourselves have a long way to go. And we don't always see quick answers to our prayers. May we always look forwards in faith and hope. Trusting in you to work out your plan for the earth. In Jesus' name, we bring our prayers. Amen. And shall we say together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, our final hymn, Singing the Faith 185, a, a good old gospel favourite. Sing we the king who is coming to reign.
Shall we say the words of the blessing together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.